All right, let's stay on the economy and the markets here. Let's bring in Michael Antonelli. He's a market strategist over at Baird Private Wealth Management. So, Mike, you just heard Emily talking about the story of the year in the economy. And, and, I, and I think from a market's perspective, um, it's really about how much investors have been willing to look through all this bad stuff. Are you worried about that kind of attitude changing as we get into 21? So there's a lot on my mind as, as I approach the end of this year and, and I go into next year. And certainly, like everyone on Wall Street, I can't predict the future. Uh, but I think what's important in these kind of conversations, Miles, especially with strategists and, and people who are, are doing takes on the economy, is what's the framework that person thinks about in terms of the economy and the stock market? So to me, one of the things I ground myself in is the fact that it's consumer driven. It's a very uh, consumer focused economy. So I'll look at things like how are consumer discretionaries doing relative to staples equal weighted? So I try to remove some of the kind of market cap uh, kind of uh, bubbles and uh, are parts of that. So that continues to make new highs. I think about how will the consumer act in the new year. So I'm going to continue to look at uh, the high frequency data. Air, air travel is making new highs. We're going to look at the restaurants and hotel occupancy. But one of the things that I think is really important to focus on, to really, really focus on for the next year is the tailwind from the housing sector. And when consumers are comfortable with the value of their home, uh, even confident that the value of their home is going up, that Case Shiller this morning, uh, that, that to me paints a great background uh, for the first few quarters of 2021, which I think will be kind of the, the, the slowest of 2021. So when I think about next year, I'm thinking about housing, continued GDP and employment growth. I'm thinking about record low mortgage rates, continue to think about how the consumers are pairing their balance sheet. So those things guide my thinking into next year. Mike, it's interesting that you bring up housing because that's been a big topic. I myself moved this year. So personally, it's a, it's a topic that's on my mind. However, you know, I, I think that the sort of attitude, not just attitude towards homeownership, but it's sort of foundational place in the U.S. economy changed after the financial crisis, right? Um, do you think we're going to come back to that as homeownership is sort of the cornerstone? Because it, it feels like we have not been there uh, over the past decade or so. I don't know if we'll necessarily get back to that notion pre-GFC where the American dream uh, included a home in the suburbs. Uh, I, I just don't, I think that that romantic notion is probably uh, a part of a different era. What I do think is, is important and, and almost rarely gets talked about, certainly when it gets talked about on Twitter or in blogs or in the media, I perk up, is demographics. The, the leading edge of the millennial generation, and we've certainly talked about this, I think, a few times uh, here on Yahoo Finance together is they're bigger than the boomers who are retiring or leaving their homes. So the generational demographic tailwind in housing is more important than the story of the romantic notion of housing. But I think that that tailwind, including low rates and the fact that you know the oldest millennials are starting to starting to reach their forties, I think that helps kind of goose or boost the next few years of economic growth as as every generation. Uh, benefits from kind of a housing tailwind. So I think that's an important sector. We need to talk about that just as much as we talk about tech. I really am passionate about that. And I think that it's important for the story of next year and the following years that housing remains strong. If you start to see weakness in there, that would certainly hurt my bull case. Michael, I've had some folks uh, recently suggest to me that if everything does go right next year, vaccine rollout, to your point, housing remains strong, demographics remain strong, consumer spending is, is strong uh, as more stimulus rolls out. Could we see in the U.S. greater than 6% GDP growth? How likely is that? Again, not knowing the future, this is my framework. This is how I'm thinking about it. I really think the estimates for next year are low. This four to five percent notion, I think, is low in, in terms of in terms of GDP. I think there's a couple different options. We could get kind of a supernova of growth, kind of an eight to ten percent nominal GDP, or we might get a, a couple years of kind of five to six percent nominal GDP growth. I think that the setup is there. I don't want to say roaring twenties. I think that's probably going to get overused. I do think that the market is underestimating the amount of growth that Americans and, and, and globally consumers are going to rush out of their homes. You know, the last thing I want to do next year is get takeout. The last thing I want to do is another Zoom call. I want to get on a plane, see you guys in New York. I want to see my friends in California. I want to get out of my house. My resolution for next year is to get out of my home. And I think a lot of Americans will feel that same way. So I think the stimulus that we just saw, maybe we get bigger checks, who knows? The stimulus will help kind of narrow that K-shaped gap Consumer balance sheets are in pretty good shape if you look at the data. 
I think next year is shaping up to be really, really underestimated in terms of its growth. The question is, is that priced in? And, and that's what I grapple with. Or will there be some setback? All right, Mike Antonelli, market strategist over at Baird Private Wealth Management. Mike, uh, always great to get your thoughts. Thanks so much for joining the show and have a great new year. Thanks, guys.